I want to talk to you about how to walk with God. You can walk in an awareness of the presence of God in your every waking moment. And here is the wonderful truth. It is very, very simple. I'm going to give you a simple key today on how to walk with God. I know it's going to bless you. First, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some worship. And then we're going to get right into this lesson. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely you won't forsake the ones who seek your faith. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence. Just recently, the Lord gave me a vision. And in my vision, I saw myself, and in me was this glowing orb of light. And the light pulsated, and it would grow, and it would shrink. Whenever the light would intensify in brightness, it would also grow in size. And as the light would begin to dim, the orb would begin to shrink in size. Over the orb was laid soil and upon the soil rested structures. The Lord spoke to me very clearly about the meaning of this vision. And He told me that the orb, the orb of light that would grow and shrink and intensify and dim, was the power of my prayer life. And as the orb would grow, the soil would become smooth and the structures would stand. But as that orb would shrink, the soil would become uneven and it would shift and the structures would collapse. So the orb was the power of my prayer life. The soil was my life and all of the structures represented my responsibilities, my relationships, my ministry, and everything that I do and everything that I work toward making better. That's what the structures were. So the meaning of the vision was very simple. 
As long as prayer is in place, the soil is smooth and you have a firm foundation upon which you can place the structures of life. But as your prayer wanes, as it dims, the soil becomes chaotic and nothing can stand. When that orb of light was fully grown, it was able to carry more weight and more pressure. But when that orb of light shrank and dimmed, it was only able to carry so much before everything around it collapsed. And this is the truth about your prayer life. When you pray, you build the foundation for everything else in your life. If you don't have a prayer life, nothing in your life will stand. And it is our prayer life that we must cultivate, that we must constantly be aware of and participating in. Prayer is the key to closeness with God. But here's the wonderful truth. It's so simple. Prayer is as simple as spending time with the Lord. And spending time with the Lord is as simple as being intentionally aware of His presence. Now, there are those times where you have to move away from the responsibilities of life to seek the Lord in a more private fashion just as Jesus instructed us to do in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But then there are those times where throughout the day, you can be in fellowship with the Lord in a constant way. Every single moment of every single day can be filled with the awareness of God's presence. You know, I think of Enoch, who we read of in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. The scripture says that Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. In fact, let's go there. I want to show it to you because I want to point something out to you that I believe is relevant to what we're talking about here. And that's Genesis chapter 5, verse number 24. And the scripture says this. Actually, let's begin at verse 23. Enoch lived 365 years, walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. The King James Version words it differently, a little more dramatically. He just simply was not. Now, he lived 365 years. If, let's say, he began to walk in close fellowship with the Lord at the age of 20, that left him many, many years to walk in closeness with God. But he spent so much time with God that he simply ceased to be. I think of John chapter 3, verse 30, where the scripture says, I must decrease, but he must increase. My point is, that that fellowship with God will begin to change you. That awareness of His presence will begin to change you. One of my earliest prayers was, Lord, let my hands be your hands. Heal through them and touch through them. Let my eyes be your eyes. I want to see things, people, and situations the way you see them. Let my ears be your ears. I want to hear your voice. Let my mouth be your mouth. I want to speak your truth. Let my feet be your feet. Guide me wherever you want me to go. Let my heart beat as one with yours. Let my being be your being. Crucify my will and in its place resurrect your own. I'm talking about oneness. I'm talking about awareness of God's presence. That awareness, that oneness will draw you into His presence, will draw you into a oneness with Him. Now, the Lord is everywhere, and therefore He can be involved in everything. You don't have to wait to go to church to seek the Lord. You don't have to wait to get into the privacy of your prayer room to really spend time with God, though that aspect of prayer is important, and you absolutely need to do that. But I'm talking about, in addition to those things, walking in an awareness of His presence, a constant state of nearness to God. I can say with all honesty that I walk in a awareness with the Lord. I can sense Him grieving when I see things that grieve His heart. I can sense Him rejoicing when I obey Him. I can sense Him guiding me. I can hear Him speaking to me. I can feel Him through me wanting to touch people around me. This oneness with God this union with the Holy Spirit, this awareness of His presence, this 24-7 fellowship, this communion with God. 
brings you to life, refreshes you, energizes you. You will walk in a constant power. You will walk in a constant confidence. Now, I think of Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, where it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I want to think of the Lord constantly. I want to focus on his goodness. I want to think of all he has done for me. I want to think of his nature and his attributes and his personality and his word. And when you walk in that awareness, that constant awareness of his presence, you'll begin to be transformed. You know, Jesus did this. And awareness is simply thinking about God, keeping God in your mind, keeping God as a focus. It's simple. Jesus did this. Look at John chapter 5, verses 16 through 20. This is a powerful portion of Scripture. The Scripture says, So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules. But Jesus replied, My Father is always working, and so am I. The Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him. For he not only broke the Sabbath, he called God his Father, thereby making himself equal with God. So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the Father will show him how to do even greater works than healing this man. Then you will truly be astonished. I love that. The Father is always working and so am I. He said that he doesn't do a thing unless he sees his Father doing it. Now think about that. Jesus walked in the perfect center of the will of God. I seek the Lord, I would say, on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. Very rarely does an hour even go by where I haven't spoken to the Lord or thought about the Lord or considered the Lord in what I'm doing. And I say that, and I can say it with all honesty before you, hardly an hour goes by where I don't think about the Lord. In the same way, but in a more intense way, Jesus was mindful of the will of the Father, not hour by hour, not minute by minute, not second by second, but moment by moment. Jesus walked in the perfect will of God down to the very last millisecond. He was directly in the will of God. I think also of Jesus, how he would withdraw in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, where the scripture says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So Jesus stepped in sync with God. He simply lived in an awareness of the will of his Father. He lived in an awareness of who he was in his Father. John chapter 17, verse 20 through 21 say, I am praying not only for these disciples, and this is Jesus talking, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Now listen to what he prays for you. Listen to what Jesus prays for you. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Now think about this. This oneness with God is not some experience that we will have in the there and then. It's a reality we can live in the here and now. Why? Jesus said that it will be a sign to them. Who's he talking about? The people in the world. Now how is it supposed to be a sign to the people in the world if our oneness comes later. The truth is, oneness with God, union with God, union with Christ is for here and for now. You are already one with Him in your spirit. You are not two spirits, you are one spirit. And you're already one with Him now. 
And there are things that happen in you when you walk in this awareness. Listen to me. It really is as simple as considering God. Just, if I put it to you plainly, just try to think about God and consider God as often as possible and in every situation. It's that simple. And when you do that, when you walk in that awareness of His presence, you will be more often drawn to pray. You will more often go into the Word. You will more often worship. You will less often sin. You will less often neglect the things of the Spirit. And you will walk in a consideration of the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son. And here are some things that result in each moment of your life. Number one, you will be fulfilled in each moment. Loneliness, frustration, fear, depression, they cannot be present when you walk in an awareness of the nearness of God. People of the presence are calm. They are confident. They are courageous. They are bold. They are filled with joy. They are kind. They are patient. You will walk each moment fulfilled. Number two, you will be guided in each moment. You will not miss the will of God when you walk in an awareness of God. You can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with confidence and clarity. The confusion will be gone. You no longer have to accept the lie that it must be difficult to hear God. So you'll be fulfilled in each moment. You'll be guided in each moment. You will be holy in each moment. You won't grieve the Holy Spirit as it says not to in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, because you'll be aware of His presence. You'll be aware of the things that you watch and listen to and do that grieve the Holy Spirit. You will be holy in each moment. You will be effective in each moment. Think about evangelism and ministry. You will be supernatural in each moment. Why? Because the miraculous surrounds you. The presence of Jesus surrounds you. You talk about miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm talking about the presence of Jesus. When you have the presence of Jesus on you in this way, you don't have to chase signs because signs will follow you. You want to talk about miracles, signs, and wonders? Jesus is the grandest of all wonders. He's God's clearest sign. And His presence abiding in the believer is the greatest of all miracles. When you walk in, in this awareness of God, you walk in it all. And it's just as simple. Walking with God is just as simple. At least the initiation of it, the beginning of it, the foundation of it is just as simple. It's keeping Him in your mind, thinking about Him and considering Him moment to moment, every day. And the presence of God will be sensed by you. His nearness will be sensed in each moment. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that the Lord would give you this hunger, this desire to seek Him, and that the Holy Spirit would be your constant reminder to consider God, to consider His will. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving this prayer. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would stir a hunger and a desire for the depths of the Father's heart, Pray, Lord, that you would draw that one into union with God. Remind us, Holy Spirit. Remind us to consider God. Remind us to think of Him. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your power and presence would rest on them. Let them be empowered with the Spirit from on high. And I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, keep us aware of your presence. Keep us close to you. Help us to cling to you. In the name of Jesus. And I want you to say it because you agree. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we're praying for you. I always say that because... I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, then go ahead and use the information here at the bottom of the screen. It's absolutely free. You'll get a teaching from me every single week sent to your email inbox on Sundays, brand new, 
and you'll be able to reply to that email for prayer support from our staff. I want to read your comments now, and these are from last week's video, Holy Spirit, the Hidden Dove. And these are what you commented on last week's video. And by the way, if you'd like me to read your comments next week, then go ahead and leave a comment on this video, and I may feature it in next week's comments. Okay, our first commenter, Gladys Orango writes, I've been concerned to why I haven't been hearing the Holy Spirit, and now I know why. Thank you so much, and may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. Taria Young writes, This spoke right to me literally 10 seconds into the video. Thank you for this message. I've been feeling very distant from God lately, but this just confirmed that I have to go back to seeking Him. Anisha Alexis writes, Stephen, you've done it again. I don't know what it is, but your music seems to soothe my mind. Thank you for this message. I was surely blessed. Ruby writes, Thank you, Pastor David, for this wonderful video. Now I know why sometimes I can't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, because He wants me to seek Him. Thank you so much. God bless you and your ministry. Angel Nancy writes, God bless you, Pastor David. God uses you to answer a lot of my spiritual concerns just when I need answers. Brother Stephen, may God bless you tremendously for the worship. My soul is always blessed. Well, you know, we are in alignment. I truly believe it that myself, Stephen, and you, the viewer, you and I are in alignment spiritually. And so that's why I love doing this ministry because it's the Holy Spirit's ministry. And He's going to guide this channel wherever He wants to guide it. So it will always be a word right on time. And the final comment from Joanne Belendo writes, Thank you, Pastor David, for reminding me of how I fervently prayed before, and now I know it's time to go back. I just wanted to let you know that I also see you as my brother. If the Lord wills, may He give us a chance to meet in person so that you may bless our brethren here at the Philippines. Amen. Well, I definitely do want to come to the Philippine Islands. In fact, I want to go to South Africa. I want to go to Brazil. I want to go to Canada. I want to go to all the states in the United States, Australia, Indonesia, India. I mean, you name it, I want to go there. We receive invites from all around the world, from multiple different ministries, and I want to say yes to the nations. And this is where I need your help. Listen. If you've been blessed by this content, don't turn the video off. I want to talk to you. You've been blessed by this content. Your life has been touched in some way by our ministry. I'm calling on you for your help. I need your help. I'm calling on my brothers and my sisters, the Spirit Church family, the YouTube viewer, the Encounter TV viewer, the ministry partner, however you're connected to this ministry. I'm calling on you for help now. We have a mandate from the Lord to win souls. That is what I'm about. That is my heart. And that is what we need to do because that, I believe, is the agenda of heaven for this hour. Win souls, win souls, win souls. Now, that is our why. Our ministry is a very practical ministry in that we do a few things with excellence rather than many things with mediocrity. So our ministry, in order to fulfill the mandate to win more souls, does two simple outreaches, and that is events and media. International events, worldwide media, and that is our global reach. The events include the miracle services and the impartation services and when I speak at churches. The media includes YouTube and television and my teachings and Stephen Moctezuma's worship videos and all of the power and presence of God clips that we show you of the miracles and people being touched by the Holy Spirit. You've seen all the content. So those two categories of ministries are our what. Now, in order to take both of those to the next level, we're moving into a brand new ministry facility and this is where we need your help. We needed a thousand new $30 a month supporters. These are people who give $30 on a monthly basis automatically from their checking account or credit card or whatever, however they do it. And they sign up for monthly donations. We needed a thousand partners in order to get to the next phase of ministry. Here is where we are right now in the campaign. As far as the day this video is posted, here is where we are in this campaign. 
We are less than 100 partners away from being able to get into this new facility. Now, the monthly support covers the monthly cost of the facility. There are some one-time costs that we'll talk about later. When we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. But right now, I just need the monthly support. I need to know that you're with me on a monthly basis so that we can move into this new facility. Let me tell you what this facility is going to enable us to do. It's going to enable us to do weekly services and broadcast them live on YouTube and Facebook and so forth. But imagine coming in to Southern California, coming into the television studio, sitting in while we tape, having Stephen Moctezuma lead you in worship. I'll teach you the word. We'll pray over you in person right there in studio. That's a weekly service. We're going to be able to do our new television network that's based on the top box television technology. We're going to have a 24 seven prayer room. We're going to create more content in higher quality than ever before and reach more people than ever before. Also with that monthly support, we're going to do more events than ever before. We're going to go more places than ever before, but I need your support. So bottom line, help us win souls through events and media by becoming a $30 a month supporter today. Now here's how you can sign up. If you're watching this on YouTube, wait until the end of the video. A red button is going to appear that you can click and it will take you right to the link. It's secure. You can sign up there. And if you're, and make sure you're watching the video on our channel, not on some other channel because we're, we're the ones who put the real link. And then also, if you're watching this in the app, let the video finish and the video will disappear. And then you'll see a button that says partner with David. Click on that and you can partner. If you're not watching this on YouTube and you're not watching this on the app, Simply use the information at the bottom of the screen. Do it today. Sign up to become a $30 a month supporter or more. And it, when you do sign up to become a $30 a month supporter or more, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths about Demons and Spiritual Warfare, a signed copy, my gift to you as an initiation gift for signing up to partner with our ministry. So do that today. Help us reach that goal. And then I will keep you posted on where we are with that. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.